Welcome to the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission Economic Development Video Series. Each segment in this series provides information on some of the tools, strategies, and resources available to communities to assist with a variety of economic development projects or programs in West Central Wisconsin. These videos were developed and produced by the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission with funding support from the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration. West Central Wisconsin is a vibrant region full of large and small communities. These communities have neighborhoods that provide homes to families, busy downtowns that keep local economies humming, and industry that makes job opportunities available to residents and newcomers alike. Cities, villages, and towns across the region frequently carry out infrastructure projects in order for these communities to be places where people can live, work, and play. This infrastructure comes in a variety of forms, such as roads, sewer, and water systems, and wastewater treatment facilities. It can even include other types of resources, such as business incubators that help new businesses to grow. Infrastructure projects such as these are important to allow communities to meet their economic development goals, but often funds from outside sources are necessary to help pay for project costs. Communities frequently raise funds for infrastructure projects by applying for grants, which is money that does not need to be repaid, and sometimes for loans, which is money that is paid back at times with interest and at other times without interest. Federal and state agencies and even some private foundations provide grants or loans to communities to fund infrastructure projects in order to promote local economic development. Often, funders require that a community provides a portion of the funds needed to pay for the project costs, known as match funds. The percentage of match depends on the funder, but in many cases it will be half or less of those costs. Depending on the type of infrastructure project a community is planning, there are potentially many different sources that could help fund it. In this video, we will be reviewing several commonly used sources to provide funds for infrastructure projects in West Central Wisconsin. These sources generally fall into two major categories of funding. The first category is federal sources, which tend to be for large projects. Federal sources also usually have significant reporting requirements and they are the most competitive. The second category is State of Wisconsin sources. While these sources can also fund large projects, have rigorous reporting requirements, and are still competitive, the odds of receiving a state grant are better compared to federal sources because the number of applicants competing for the awards tends to be somewhat fewer. Commonly used funders at the federal level include the Economic Development Administration, or EDA, the Community Development Block Grant Public Facilities Program, otherwise known as CDBGPF, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture Rural Development Program, or USDA-RD. Commonly used funders at the state level include the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Safe Drinking Water Loan Program, also known as SDWLP, and the Clean Water Fund Program, also known as CWFP, and the Wisconsin Department of Transportation's Transportation Economic Assistance, or T program. The next part of this video provides more in-depth information on commonly used federal sources for funding that help communities pay for infrastructure projects. Please note that specific details about the sources, such as potential funding award amounts or other program information, are subject to change. The first of the federal funding sources is the Economic Development Administration. This agency is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce and funds infrastructure projects that support business growth resulting in job creation, job retention, and private capital investment. Examples of the types of projects funded include, but are not limited to, industrial parks, business incubators, workforce training facilities, technology-based facilities, and science and research parks. EDA provides awards that usually range between two to three million dollars, and most projects require a 50% match from the applicant. Eligible applicants include Native American tribes, state, county, city, or other local governments, special purpose units of government engaged in economic development, universities and colleges, and nonprofit organizations working with a unit of government. 
EDA provided funding that helped construct the St. Croix Valley Business Innovation Center, a business incubator in River Falls, which is located in St. Croix County. The 31,000 square foot building provides manufacturing, office, and co-working space, along with support services to new and emerging businesses. The building has been in operation since 2018 and has helped both small and medium-sized businesses get on their feet. This project would not have happened if we wouldn't have had the funding from the EDA. $1.4 million was a significant contribution, about half of the total project. Uh, if we didn't have that, this building wouldn't exist. Uh, we've been around for a little over three years now, and just in during 2020, a global pandemic, um, the members here at the center added 29 new jobs, over $12 million of revenue um, into the Valley. So again, without that EDA grant, we wouldn't have been able to support those members and be able to connect them to the resources that they needed to help their business grow. EDA also provides funds to help communities plan for infrastructure investments. In 2019, it provided a grant to Chippewa County that allowed it to complete a feasibility study to assess the potential development of a new business park. It really allowed us to do the feasibility study. We didn't have the funds available to do that. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, we really worked with a good agency that uh, did the feasibility study, but they look at things we could never look at. They look at um, truck traffic, they look at uh, supply demand, um, they look at job growth, they look at housing, um, availability for employees. So they do things that there would be no way we'd be able to do that. Look at economic factors in the area. Um, so without the grant, we never would have even been able to do the feasibility study. It is important to note that EDA generally does not have deadlines for application submission, but in most cases, it accepts applications on an ongoing basis. Additionally, applications for construction funds must include commitments from businesses that indicate their intent to locate at the facility being constructed. Another federal funding source is the Community Development Block Grant Public Facilities Program, which is known as CDBGPF. Funds are provided by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, but they are distributed in Wisconsin through the state's Department of Administration. Examples of projects funded include expanding, upgrading, or otherwise improving local infrastructure in order to address a health and safety concern, such as water, sanitary sewer, or storm drainage systems, wastewater treatment facilities, and streets. Constructing community facilities like community centers, libraries, senior centers, and fire stations, Acquisition, demolition, or rehabilitation of deteriorated buildings or contaminated properties for site improvements, and removal of architectural barriers to ensure accessibility in a public building. Grants are awarded at a two-to-one ratio, meaning for every two dollars provided in CDBGPF funds, one dollar in match funds is required. The maximum award is one million dollars. Under the CDBGPF program, an eligible applicant is a city, village, or township with a population less than 50,000, and counties with populations under 200,000. Applicants must qualify as distressed communities, which means that 51% or more of the population would be of low or moderate income. Smaller areas within communities can also qualify if an income survey demonstrates that 51% of residents are of low or moderate income. In addition, projects serving certain groups that have been predetermined to be of low or moderate income known as limited clientele, may also qualify. Finally, certain projects that improve blighted areas or that meet an urgent local need may be eligible. The CDBGPF program, in conjunction with local match funds and other state of Wisconsin resources, helped to fund the reconstruction of East Begley Street in Greenwood, which is located in Clark County. The sewer and water utilities along East Begley Street were aging and causing problems for residents. CDBGPF funds helped to install new infrastructure and rebuild the road. Trent Johnson, utility director for the city of Greenwood, had this to say about the conditions of the water mains and storm sewer along East Begley Street before the project took place. The water mains were bad. We would have breaks all the time. Um, we even had problems with the storm sewer. It was heaving, causing the road to break up, so we had quite a few issues with that whole street. The project not only improved the conditions of the utilities and road along East Begley Street itself, it also resulted in longer-term positive impacts for the community by not having to focus so many city resources on simply maintaining the street. Here's Trent Johnson again. But really, um, the, another impact was 
the fact that we don't have to um, spend a lot of time on maintenance on that street anymore. The CDBGPF program also helped the village of Luck, located in Polk County, to make improvements to its wastewater treatment facility, which were needed to address health and safety concerns for local residents. With the help of the CDBGPF grant, the village is able to provide improved services to its community members. Other important aspects of the CDBGPF program are that applicants are allowed to subgrant funds to nonprofit service providers. In addition, projects must address a problem that affects the health and safety of community residents. A third major federal funding source is the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Rural Development Program, which offers funding for community projects in rural areas of Wisconsin. In most cases, funding comes in the form of affordable loans or loan guarantees, and they can cover the costs of even very large projects. Funds can be directed toward the development or improvement of essential public services and facilities. A wide variety of projects can be funded that includes, but is not limited to, fire stations, town halls, hospitals, adult and child care centers, assisted living facilities, schools, libraries, street projects, and many other community-based initiatives. By helping to develop these amenities, the program can allow rural communities to increase their competitiveness in attracting and retaining businesses that create good jobs for residents. One prominent example of a rural development project from west central Wisconsin is Chippewa River Industries, based in Chippewa Falls. Through its work center located in the Lake Wissota Business Park, the organization helps disabled and disadvantaged residents in Chippewa County by providing them with opportunities for jobs, services, and training. In tandem with a grant from the previously discussed Community Development Block Grant Public Facilities Program, the project received a loan from Rural Development that helped to expand its main building and develop a new facility across the street, thus allowing it to run more efficiently and create a safer environment for workers. As demonstrated by this project and the partnership with CDBG, Rural Development is a program that can be easily utilized with other sources of funding. We now turn to sources provided through the state of Wisconsin that can help fund infrastructure projects in many communities throughout the region. As with the federal sources, specific details about these state sources, such as potential funding award amounts or other program information, are subject to change. The first state-level funding source consists of two programs through the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. These are the Safe Drinking Water Loan Program and the Clean Water Fund Program. The Safe Drinking Water Loan Program provides financial assistance to municipalities for publicly owned drinking water infrastructure projects. For this program, typical projects include new wells, wellhouse rehabilitation, storage facilities, and water main replacements. The Clean Water Fund Program does the same for publicly owned wastewater and stormwater infrastructure projects. Typical projects include sewer replacement and rehabilitation and wastewater treatment facility upgrades. Both programs provide below-market-rate long-term loans for the planning, design, and construction of eligible projects. No match is required, and in some cases, a portion of the loan may be eligible for forgiveness, which is called principal forgiveness. These two programs work very well with other funding programs. For example, the City of Greenwood in Clark County used both Clean Water and Safe Water Loan Funds together with Community Development Block Grant Public Facilities funding for its East Begley Street project. This mix of funding also allowed the community to reconstruct the western portion of Begley Street, which is located on the other side of the state highway that runs through the center of Greenwood. Eligible applicants for these programs include, but are not limited to, cities, towns, villages, counties, and sanitary districts in Wisconsin. Due dates can be found by consulting the application guidelines. Another important state of Wisconsin funding source focused on transportation initiatives is the Wisconsin Department of Transportation's Transportation Economic Assistance, or T, program. This program provides 50% matching grants to governing bodies throughout the state for road, rail, harbor, and airport projects that support the development of businesses. The goal of the program is to attract and retain businesses in Wisconsin and thereby create and increase the number of jobs in the state. The maximum amount of funding provided is $5,000 per job created or retained by the business that will utilize the transportation improvements. However, the program will provide only up to 50% of a project's eligible costs, and it will only fund projects that retain jobs if those jobs are at risk of leaving the state. In addition, any individual grant cannot exceed $1 million. 
Also important to note is that the 50% local match can come from any combination of local, federal, or private funds or in-kind services, but not other state sources. Eligible cost items for this program include design engineering, environmental testing and remediation, acquisition consisting of the portion of real estate under the right-of-way only, relocation of residences and businesses, construction or reconstruction of an existing road, utility relocation, and construction engineering and contingencies, which can be no more than 15% of project costs. And finally, eligible applicants for the program include cities, villages, towns, or counties in Wisconsin. The program also requires that the municipality have jurisdiction over the land on which the transportation project will be located. Please note that applications are accepted year-round on a first-come, first-served basis. Numerous T projects have been completed in West Central Wisconsin over the years. One example is from the city of Cumberland in Barron County, where a T grant helped to provide infrastructure, which included street construction, to support the development of Artisam, an international company that was expanding in the community. Over 75 jobs were created or retained as a result of the project, providing an economic boost to the city. This program is also easy to coordinate with other funding sources, some of which were utilized in conjunction with the T-Grant for the Artisan project, including a community development block grant. T-Program applications are completed by the applicant and the business working closely together. Importantly, the program requires a commitment from the business to create or retain jobs. These commitments cannot be speculative, and the applicant must provide assurances that the number of jobs anticipated from the proposed project will materialize within three years from the date of the project agreement and remain for another four years. All of the funding sources discussed in this video, which at the federal level includes the Economic Development Administration, Community Development Block Grant Public Facilities Program, and U.S. Department of Agriculture Rural Development Program, and at the state level includes the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Safe Drinking Water Loan Program and Clean Water Fund Program, and the Wisconsin Department of Transportation's Transportation Economic Assistance Program are key examples of sources that can provide communities in West Central Wisconsin with the funds they need to make infrastructure projects happen, which in turn helps communities to reach their economic potential. When considering these resources, one important question is, what is the role of a community in the application process? As an applicant for these program funds, a community takes on a number of important roles, including developing a project idea, passing a resolution to confirm its commitment to the project, completing and submitting the application, providing match funds, if awarded, accepting the funds, completing the project, abiding by all award requirements, such as reporting to the funder at regular intervals, and providing any other required funds to complete the project in the event of cost overruns, because most funders will not provide additional funds beyond the amount initially committed. Communities can also utilize the assistance of grant administrators to help them through the process of applying for, and if awarded, administering their grant or loan. These groups have extensive experience working on a wide variety of funding awards, and they have developed long-standing relationships with funders. For a community, this makes the process of applying for funds and carrying out projects much easier. The assistance grant administrators provide can come in several important ways, including providing assistance to write part or all of an application, communicating with the funder before application submission and while carrying out the project, and ensuring the applicant abides by all of the funder's requirements during project implementation. This video has provided an overview of how grants and loans can assist communities in carrying out infrastructure projects that are important to their future development. It has also reviewed funding sources at both the federal and state levels that are frequently used throughout West Central Wisconsin when implementing projects. By taking advantage of sources like the ones presented in this video, communities across the region can help make their project ideas become a reality and thereby start to realize their economic vision. Please contact the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission for more information on federal and state grants and loans for infrastructure projects.